It was both empowering and infuriating to know that the person who I needed to hear those words is not here to hear them. He knows exactly what he's done, and um, I hope he comes clean about it. We need to get to the bottom of everybody who was involved with that. Those just a couple of the accusers of Jeffrey Epstein who spoke outside a federal courthouse in Manhattan yesterday after they told their stories at a hearing. In all, more than a dozen women spoke inside the courtroom, and they are demanding justice, even though, as you know, Epstein is dead, that after committing suicide while in a federal jail in Manhattan. The accusers and their attorneys, they want alleged accomplices prosecuted, and they're also going after his estate. We also have new developments about the Harvey Weinstein case. The movie mogul's sex crimes trial was supposed to start next month, but it instead has been delayed till January. Weinstein was back in court Monday to enter a not guilty plea. Actress Annabelle Sciorra is not involved in those specific cases against Weinstein, but a new grand jury indictment paves the way for her to testify. Sciorra is one of the actresses who told her story to The New Yorker, alleging that Weinstein abused her. She's just one of a dozen such accusers with similar allegations. My next guest representing Sciorra, plus other Weinstein accusers as well, as Epstein accusers, Gloria Allred, she joins us now. Gloria, thank you for the time. Thank you for inviting me, Richard. Well, there's many parallels with this, but, but let's first start with the uniqueness um, of the Epstein case, uh, given uh, that he's obviously dead now. Um, what, what does justice look like for a victim um, of Epstein, and, and how... Uh, therapeutic was it to be able to at least tell their stories in court yesterday? Well, I think that all of the victims would like to know the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth as to who conspired with Epstein to uh, sexually exploit these vulnerable underage victims because he could not have done this alone. There were individuals who recruited these minors, these children, to bring them to Mr. Epstein. And the question is, did they knowingly conspire with Mr. Epstein to sexually traffic or sexually victimize these young girls? And I think it's important to get to the truth, even though he is deceased. Uh, the United States Attorney for the Southern District of New York assured me that they are continuing to investigate to see who may have conspired with Mr. Epstein and if they did so knowingly and if there's evidence sufficient to support a charge, in other words, a prosecution against them, then that's exactly what he's going to do. And I know that the U.S. Attorney's Office is doing a very serious investigation. I'm in conversation with them. Some of my clients have cooperated with law enforcement and shared their truth and what they know about associates of Mr. Epstein and what their experience was. And uh, we'll see what happens in the future. We've covered on this program a lot, Gloria, as it relates to Harvey Weinstein. Um, uh, some questionable passes that he was given, uh, not just in the entertainment industry, but also uh, in the legal world as well. Legitimate questions in terms of the handling um, from the Manhattan DA's office um, when legitimate claims were brought before. Now uh, there's another uh, roadblock here. They're looking for a change of venue. Has Harvey Weinstein gotten preferential treatment? And more broadly, you've handled a lot of cases um, where powerful people have been accused of doing horrible things. Um, how does political, economic, um, other uh, powerful plays here, how do they get a certain um, brand of justice that the general public doesn't? Well, and that's a very good question because a lot of people feel that Epstein also got a ridiculously sweet deal uh, a number of years ago in the 2008 plea deal that he was able to enter to soliciting an act of prostitution, making false statements to the authorities, and then registering as a sex offender, but then he only got a sentence of 13 months, and he was able to leave jail six days a week to go to his office. Who gets that kind of deal? Why did he get that kind of deal? And what happened recently? Was it a suicide? Or did someone take his life and try to make it look like a suicide? There are lots of questions to be answered, but here's the point. I, as a victim's rights attorney, my goal is to equalize the power. 
because I don't think celebrities are above the law. I don't think they should get special treatment, special handling, special rights. Uh, they should get the same rights, no more, no less than anyone else. And victims matter. Maybe their name is not known, except to them, their family, their workplace, and their community. But they're just as important as any celebrity, and we have to protect them and make sure that their rights are vindicated as well. For folks who haven't seen it, there's a powerful documentary, Seeing All Red, um, where you talk personally that you come to this, uh, unfortunately, uh, when you're dealing with your clients, uh, alleged victims of abuse, uh, from a personal place. Yourself, you were also uh, the victim of sexual assault. Um, and you at one point say, the attending nurse um, in an illegal abortion that nearly killed you that was the product of a rape said, uh, in effect, now, uh, hopefully you learned your lesson. Compare, forget about going back to that point. Go back even 10 years. How much has or hasn't changed in terms of whether it be the Me Too movement, et cetera, how women are at least listened to now, or do you think that we kid ourselves that they're still not taken as seriously as they should be? Yes, thank you for mentioning the documentary about my battle uh, for victims and for women's rights over the last more than 40 years. It's still streaming on Netflix, Seeing All Red. And uh, what I want to say is my life experience certainly has had an impact on my representation of victims because I can remember when I was in my 20s and I thought, no one is going to believe me. What's the point of reporting to law enforcement? I can also remember having an abortion when it was illegal for a doctor to provide one although it was not illegal to have one. So as a result, women like me uh, had to get abortions that were from unlicensed health care providers, and many of us uh, were maimed or some, many died. Uh, you know, I almost uh, hemorrhaged to death. Uh, having said that, uh, when the nurse said, uh, I hope you've learned your lesson or something to that effect, I did learn a lesson, and that is abortion should be safe, legal, affordable, and available, because that's the only way uh, for women to be safe and not to have to suffer from illegal abortions. So yes, and that made me a very strong advocate for pro-choice and for ending the laws which would attempt to control women and control their lives and their choices. It's wrong, and no one should be subjected to illegal abortion laws. Well, uh, you certainly uh, are more than busy here. I wish you the best of luck in uh, both of these high-profile cases with the multiple clients you're representing. Thank you so much for the time. Thank you. Justice for victims. And on that note, everyone, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, the panel will rejoin us. We're going to discuss some tragic cases involving kids who died in those hot cars. Even though many cases are similar, they're not all handled the same way not at all, depending where you are, depending on how the authorities looks at the cases. I'll ask the guys at the table, is this a tragedy or is this a crime that should be punished? I'm talking about those parents who left those kids in those cars. We'll talk about that and more after this.